This is the plaintiff, Michael Santarella. He says he bought a Maltese pup from the defendant, and the poor thing had parvo, kidney failure, and a hernia to boot. They had to put the little guy down or spend 5,000 bucks on more tests. He opted to put the dog to sleep because it was suffering. And now a year later, he still can't get the money he's owed by the very uncaring and irresponsible defendant. So he's suing for every penny of the $4,243.59 he's owed. This is the defendant, Jeanette Ledisky. She says the plaintiff bought a perfectly healthy puppy. Then a week later told her he had put it to sleep. The plaintiff's vet injected it with a parvo shot, but she had already given him one a week earlier. Now the poor thing had been injected twice, and that's why it got so sick. She's very sorry, but she did nothing wrong and owes no money. She's accused of selling a sickly puppy. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff bought a Maltese pup from the defendant, and it had parvo and a hernia. But the defendant says the pup was healthy when it left her care. It's the case of my puppy was subpar. All right, Mr. Santarella, you are suing Ms. Ladisky for $4,243.59 in vet bills, plus the cost of a puppy that you bought from her that unfortunately did not make it and passed away in the first week. I'm sorry to hear that. Tell me about what happened. My wife and I wanted to get another, we have a Maltese, and we wanted to get one that was relatively the same size. So she was about an hour away. I found her ad, went down there and picked up the pup. Now, when uh, we went down there, she, she opened the door when we pulled in the driveway, and she was holding the dog, and I fell, I fell in love with the dog right away. It was a little thing, about a pound and a quarter. So we took... I, just, I don't think that I am delicate enough to have a dog that weighs a pound and a quarter in my house. I am positive I will step on the dog or accidentally... But they, how, how do people do it? These well, tiny little cats that bark and... I have a six-pound Maltese, and she pretty much took care of him. Yeah. So uh, we, got, uh, we got the dog home. How much did you pay for the dog? $800. Is there any paperwork from the sale of the dog? Yes. May I see it? Okay, so go on. The dog was good the first day. Then it was kind of like a little wishy-washy, but I figured, you know, the dog was tired or whatever. Then she started to get a little bit bad, and about a couple of days later, I took her to the vets and checked her out. So what day did you take her to the vet? May 1st. Okay, so and April 25th is the day that you bought the That's dog? That's the day I brought the dog home. Okay, so go on. All right, brought him to the vet. She gave her a little bit of medicine. Gave him a little bit of medicine. For what? Uh... Do you have the report from yes, the doctor? Yes, I have, the, I Wait, have all the, the reports. the report from the doctor from that day? Yes. Okay, let's see that. Yeah. You're welcome. Okay. Did you bring this form with you to the vet and let them know that these shots had been administered on this day before the vet did all these shots? Yes. So on May 1st, which happens to be my birthday. Happy birthday. I may think, well, it's not May 1st today, but on May 1st, <laughs> um, they gave the dog a couple of shots that had been given on March 28th. And I'm wondering if they're like a second round that's supposed to be given or a round that is not supposed to be given. Because your position is that the medicine that the dog got is what made the dog sick? Um, I gave him, I gave the puppy three shots. And um, I instructed Mr. Santarelli that the puppy would need another shot in another week or so. Oh, okay. So the vet gave the dog a parvo shot. Mm -hmm. And what else happened? Uh, it was still listless. He got a little uh, vomiting, liquid vomit after a couple of days. And then on the seventh, he was in, in his little bed and he just wouldn't get up. He couldn't get, he was walking and he was walking all. Ugh. This must have been so like heartbreaking. You know, as soon as I saw that, I called, I called the vet up and I took him directly up there. And that was on what date? The, uh, May the 1st. I mean, sorry, May the 7th. Okay, May the 7th, and then? I left him up there with him and he called me back. He said, I have, you know, their, their veterinary closes at eight o'clock and I have to take him to the emergency, uh, to the emergency uh, vet which I did. So 
I mean, the the dog was past. The dog was relatively. You didn't think the dog was going to make it. No. You finally get a call from them at what time? Uh, three, three, three o'clock in the morning. And they tell you the dog is not going to make told it. Me, he said, what he told me was, look, he says, you could spend another $5,000. How much had you spent until that point? 3600 on the on the Good vet Okay. So he says, I could, you know, he says, I could treat him. He'll probably, it'll cost about another $5,000, but he says, I can't guarantee you. And he doesn't look good. Right. So rather than to have the puppy suffer. Right. Because when we went up there, he had the air thing on his face. And right. You don't have to prove to me the puppy was suffering. It is a perfectly legitimate position to decide that you are not going to spend $8,000 on the puppy. It's mm -hmm. perfectly legitimate. Well, if, okay. if, if he would have said, I'll give you, I'll guarantee that the dog was going to come home. I'd he have can't him. say that. If he would have said that, you should have said, no, you can't. As no, soon no, as I'm he would say that, if it, there's if no guarantee. I would have paid the 5000 to get that dog back. I, I understand what you're saying. Um, so did your vet ever give you uh, a diagnosis of what was wrong with the dog and whether or not the animal was fit for purchase, as the law says? Uh, well, what he gave me. Okay, just hand him the documents and let me talk to you. So what happened here? I gave him the shots, and uh, according to uh, Will the Vet books, that shot, Parvo, modified live, would show up in the dog's titer for two to three weeks after the initial, my last shot that I gave him. Uh, and if he got the shot, when they took the test, it would, be, it would definitely show Parvo because of the shots that he's had, the modified live vaccine. So and you're suggesting that the vet killed the dog? I'm or made the dog so sick? I'm suggesting the dog wasn't that sick, but after he got another shot of Parvo, that, I think, was the finale. Because on the report that I got from the vet... The, the handwritten letter, letter? I never got an unfit for sale. I just got a letter from a vet. He didn't say anything in that letter of what unfit letter for sale. What letter did you get? Let me see the letter you got. I mean, because the unfit for sale... Let me just explain, Mr. Santarella. It's a different kind of letter. It's a letter from the, from the doctor saying at the time that this dog was sold, this dog had a problem, uh, whether it's congenital or non-congenital, and it, it, it was diseased at the time it was sold to you. And sometimes vets aren't necessarily willing to say that, depending on how much time has passed from the sale. The sale was April 25th, and the day that, they're, that the vet is noting a bunch of problems is May 9th. This this letter is like, you know, many, many lines long and nowhere does it use the magic language, which is unfit for sale. All right. I'm going to take a short recess and see if I can't reach that doctor. All, All right. Rise. So where is the best place to buy a puppy? Uh, rescue, a pet store or a breeder? What do you think? I would say a breeder because you know what you're going to get. Exactly. You buying that? Yeah, I agree. A breeder, huh? Yeah. What do you say? I disagree. I think a rescue. Why? Because their intentions are pure. OK, we are going to talk about that in a minute, going inside the courtroom. Let me just explain something to you. You had stated the position that, of course, the dog tested positive for Parvo. Yes. I had given her a Parvo shot mm -hmm. on March 28th. That's not how this works, OK? Mm -hmm. But according to the vet, look, we test for the disease, not for a therapeutic amount that's in a shot. We don't, you know, we test for the disease. It was positive for the disease. That means that there's parvo aplenty, not the, yeah. the little bit of, of parvo that's in yeah. the shot. So the dog had parvo. Now, here, here's my discomfort. We have a very specific statute that you have to have a certification by the doctor that the animal's unfit for purchase. She is right. This letter doesn't say that. But I want to get to the bottom of it, right? Mm -hmm. So what I want to do is the following. I'm going to give you a week so that this is not the doctor who saw your dog on May 1st. This is the doctor who saw your dog. This letter is authored by the doctor who saw your dog on May 8th. But she is not comfortable telling me that it was unfit for purchase because she's not the, the one who saw the dog on May 1st. But the, the vet who did isn't there, and I'm not going to make you guys wait until tomorrow right here in this courtroom, bring you like a couple of pillows and blankets. <laughs> and like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a week to give me if the doctor's willing to write it, please do not misunderstand what I am saying. Mm -hmm. I need certification by a veterinarian if it's truthful, right? If, that's, if the veterinarian can call it, because sometimes they may think it, but they can't call it. They're not willing to commit to it. Yeah. If you have a vet who's willing to commit to that animal being unfit for purchase at the time of sale, 
provide me that evidence because that is the one thing that is missing. And I'm going to give you a week to get that certification okay. with the doctor who actually saw him. But what do I do with this? Apparently, you felt bad enough where you started to pay. In fact, you paid $250. And it wasn't until you said, I can't afford the $100 payment this month. I'm only going to pay you $50. And there, that's when all of a sudden, well, I'm not going to pay you anything. He should and have he called. was only he only wanted from you the eight hundred dollars of I the know. purchase price. He didn't even ask for the and, three thousand. And he only I asked started for the and I started to pay him. Yeah. Now when you stopped paying him, he's suing you for the whole amount. Well, I said I would give you some money, and he said no. Now I want the whole amount. Yeah. I said okay. Okay. Fine. Let's go. Right. I, I I don't know what else to say. Right. You're wrong. Here's what's gonna happen. Now we're done. Now that it is in my ballpark, okay, I have to start from scratch. So. Please understand that it will make absolutely no difference to me whether she paid you the $250. You understand that, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So I will render my ruling as soon as I have or don't have the document that we've discussed. Well, okay? What do you need from me? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, okay. Nothing. Well, okay. That was easy. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good luck, folks. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And so this case uh, has a little more time to go before it's finally resolved. Um, should you have settled this thing now, as you look back on it, after what's going on here? Uh, yeah, he should have settled it, too, you know, with you know, me. Should you have paid the 800 and then you'd be done with it? Do you wish you had done that? Well, I would have, but... But you didn't. Uh, that's true, but I wanted to. But you didn't. But I, I didn't. wanted to. Good. <laughs> okay. Uh, if he comes up with this document, you're going to be well, then, in for a lot more. Well, then, we got to do what we got to do. Okay. Right down this way, right around the corner there. All right, so you have homework to do. Mm -hmm. All right, what are you going to do next? I'm going to go talk to the vet and see what, has, what you know, what's happening. Mm -hmm. If she wants to settle, that's fine. But uh, I mean, all she had to do was give me either. Now she's telling me she never had a, she wasn't dealing any more dogs. She's still selling dogs. All she had to do was give me a puppy, and it would all have been over or the eight hundred dollars. Yeah, but she doesn't. Did you say you're still open to a settlement in the interim with her now? Yeah, if she makes gonna, a decent settlement, yeah. Which would be what? What would you? I guess half of the, half the vet bills and uh, the rest of the puppy fee, what I paid for the pup. What do you think, Harvey? So the correct vet did indeed confirm that the dog was unfit for, sa for sale, uh, and uh, the plaintiff got the $1,600. Now, I want to just say one other thing. We talked about where the best place to buy a pet is. Breeders are fine, but the problem is a lot of dogs get inbred. Pet stores, I don't know. I mean, sometimes it's iffy, um, and there are diseases. I'm not saying all, but some. I'm telling you, as somebody who's done a lot of stuff in this area, that rescues are awesome uh, for all sorts of reasons. But one of them is animals, you may not believe it, but they appreciate it. They understand when they're rescued. Somehow, they don't forget. And that will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.